Hello again, everyone. This is Zombie Kids Rule, and uh, I'm, I'm I want to do a quick video. I know I keep saying quick videos, and then my videos are like 20 minutes long, but I want to do this quick video on um, a, a simple day-night system, and I, I want to do some uh, videos on very simple things that uh, that you know are just little snapshots of something, and uh, these are all things that I've learned from. Uh, you know other tutorials and i've I've played around with and I've figured things out and the, the for some of the things I want to show on these simple systems, it makes sense to do the day night system first so I'm going to do that really quickly it's going to be a simple day night system as I've said before, this is not the only way to do this, and I'm sure that there are probably plugins out there that do day night systems along with a whole bunch of other things i i don't do I don't use plugins right now. So this is just one option to do a day-night system that I know works. And I will say I had to re-record re this video because um, I, 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 I built this day-night system, you know, working off of a, tu of a tutorial I saw, you know, a month or so ago or a couple months ago. And I, I did something in it thinking about how it worked. And then after I recorded the video, I said, you know what, I better go back and double check one thing. And so I tested it really quickly. I'm, I'm a big advocate of doing very, very simple, quick tests to see if things work the way they're supposed to. And come to find out it did something I didn't want it to do. So I said, you know what, I better better uh, re-record re the video, change it, and um, I will show you exactly what it was that, that caused the problem, just in case you end up making the same mistake. So, uh, again, ignore everything else on this map. Um, the, with the day-night system that I set up, it's very rapid. So I think it's only like 10 seconds between day and afternoon uh, and then, you know, uh, evening and night. It's a, it's a four-time system. And I made it very, very short, and you can see the screen tinting um, just to see, you know, I, again, I test things very short, uh, in very short duration to, to make sure it's doing what it's supposed to. So here you can see the screen already tinted, and in roughly 10 seconds it will tint again um, because it will go to, I think this is kind of the early morning, and then it goes to afternoon, so it's tinted again. In roughly 10 seconds it will turn to uh, evening. Um, and around that time frame, an NPC should appear right over here. Um, it may be nighttime, I believe, that the NPC appears. So every 10 seconds, it's moving from, you know, day to afternoon to evening to night. And um, that, there we go, there's that NPC. He only appears at night. Uh, and then this building over here, you can only enter this during, I think, the, the morning or something. Uh, that, that I'll show those differently. So that is how this is operating. Um, it's, again, just to see it in the game very, 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 very quickly, right? So the way you can do this very, very simply, and the, the way um, I did this is using common events. So, you know, if this is uh, your first video, uh, you know, if you're just starting out and you haven't watched tutorials on like switches and variables and the, and the engine and the database and things like that, um, you know, I'll, I'll try to make sure I explain this. Um, I would recommend you go back and watch those very beginner tutorials from, from other content creators. There's a bunch out there. Common events are great because you can call them from any map event, any map, any event, and you can call them from um, uh, skills, right? You can call them from items. So you can have an item or a skill trigger a common event, and you can call common events from other common events. So uh, they're very versatile, and you, you program it once, or you, you know, tell it what to do once, and then anytime you need to use that functionality of the common event, you can reach out and grab it, and you don't have to repeat it other places. And in this instance, it's gonna it, for as long as your game is running, as long as the player's player uh, playing, these four common events: morning, afternoon, evening, and night are gonna cycle through and change the time of day, uh, however you want it to work. So these four common events are very very simple. They're very very short, very quick. So the first one is morning. And the, the trigger is parallel. So that means it's going to run while everything else is running in your game. So it's, it's always going to run in the background as long as this common event is being used. Now, this common event won't run unless a switch of it is morning is turned on. 
So <clears throat> this common event will just sit there until, not doing anything, not causing any problems, until we turn this switch, it is morning on. Once that happens, it will start running in parallel and it'll do its contents, which is it'll tint the screen to you know whatever we think is appropriate for that time of day. It's gonna do it essentially in one second, it's gonna start. Uh, to tint that screen and then it's going to wait now i only did 60 frames for testing purposes uh, you know 60 uh, 60 frames is a second so this should be about 10 seconds long um, obviously you can make this much 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 longer whatever makes sense for your game and you can uh, you know if you hit a maximum uh, of what the wait command will do you can always just add another um, wait command you can have multiple in a row so that it 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 delays as long as you want it to once it gets uh, once it reaches its its time count it's going to turn that control switch for it is morning off which is going to deactivate the morning uh, common event and it's going to turn on the switch it is afternoon so it's going to turn that switch on which is going to activate this second common event as soon as that switch is turned on it, the switch it is afternoon is is essentially what starts this common event the trigger is parallel so it starts immediately running you know in the background it's going to tint the screen again whatever you think is appropriate for afternoon or the time for you know the time of day that you make it it's going to wait again very very short so i can see this cycle through for testing purposes then once it hits its ma its you know maximum time frame of wait it's going to turn the afternoon switch off so that this common event stops working and it's going to turn the evening switch on which as you can guess when we go to the evening common event it's set up exactly the same way as the other two it's running in parallel it's required the switch it is evening on is required it tints the tints the screen to whatever you think is appropriate it waits the appropriate amount of time and then it turns the it is evening switch off to deactivate this page and turns the it is night on and last is the night common event. It's set up exactly the same way as the other three. It runs in parallel. Uh, it requires the it is night switch to be on. It tints the screen to whatever you think is appropriate. Um, it waits the amount of time you want. Then it turns the it is night switch off. And then it turns the it is morning switch on, which starts the cycle all over again. So these are very, very simple um, common events. And, you know, if you if you haven't experienced it yet, right, I can I can take any of these. I can simply uh, click shift click. I can right click and copy and then I can paste that quickly and simply into another common event. So I can I can copy and paste anything I want um, into uh, new you know another common event right that that's a huge time saver so there are our four common events very simple very quick you can make, basically make one copy and paste it and then just edit the values to to uh, if it saves you time but the question is how did we get this it is morning switch to turn on and that can be done very very simply as well so on your map let's pretend that this is my first map that appears when we um when we start up the game and um, on one of these invisible events, uh, usually I would put these in a space where the uh, the player can't walk, you know, maybe in a, in a black border area or whatever. But uh, for this purposes, it doesn't matter. And this is simply going to start that common event. So I named it Start Morning. It's There's no image. It's below the characters. They can walk on it. It is a parallel event, which means as soon as the map boots up, this common and uh, this uh, map event is going to start running. It's gonna it's gonna start to work, and it does it does something super fast, and then it's gonna be done. What it's doing is it turns on that that control troll switch. It is morning. It turns it on, and then what it's gonna do is we don't need this map event anymore. We don't need it to do anything anytime uh, again because it's done its job. So we're gonna turn a control cell switch A on which is going to advance the page and it's going so page number two is the self switch a is on so that's going to be the highest the page with the high uh, the highest page where the conditions are met and then there's no contents 
it's it's not parallel, so it's not doing anything. It's it's an action button. You don't want to you don't want to make that you don't want to leave that parallel because then it'll just sit there and and run with nothing to do, and that's you don't want that. So you know, set it to action button, uh, nothing to run. This event is now going to be over. Now, I I want I wanted to make this distinction because um, initially I built this with the um, the command of erase event. And, you know, I understood that erasing the event is going to essentially erase the event. And I was like, okay, cool. That's great. I wanted to erase. I don't want it to do anything. Here's the problem. If you use erase event, it's going to erase it while you're on the map. But when you leave and come back, that, uh, that event is going, to be, is going to be there again. So it only erases it while you're on the map. When you leave and come back and the map loads again, that event is still there and it's doing whatever it did before. So if I didn't have this control switch A and I just had a race event, when we left the map, as soon as we came back, it would turn that it is morning on. And all of a sudden, we're going to have potentially two switches on at the same time with two common events running in parallel that we don't want that to happen. So... What I what I'm, I'll show you how I know this is true because at first I built it and I was like okay it's it's working fine or at least it seemed to be working fine and I'll make sure that's there yeah I got rid of that so really quickly I'm going to make just a simple event and we're going to make it run in parallel so it will start as soon as we load this map and I'm going to do a simple uh, wait for uh, let's say an, another um, ten seconds so we'll wait ten seconds and after that, we're going to display uh, just a text, and we'll say, uh, you have waited uh, 10 seconds. And then we're going to say, OK. And then what we're going to do from there is we're going to erase that event. And here we go. We're going to erase event. And now what should happen is when we, when we start the playtest again, we'll wait 10 seconds. This text box should pop up saying, you have waited 10 seconds. Then when we accept that and make it go away, it will erase this event, and 10 seconds later, this will not happen again. However, when we leave the map and come back, after 10 seconds, this message will pop back up again. Uh, so let's, let's try that, and let's see if that's true. So I'm going to go ahead and start a playtest again. And we're going to hang out here for 10 seconds, and that dialog box should appear. And then I'm going to do one of my random map transfers afterwards. Okay, so 10 seconds. We have waited 10 seconds. We do that. Now we're going to wait another 10 seconds. Okay, we're going to wait another 10 seconds. The, um, the map will tint again, and we'll know 10 seconds is over. And we didn't get the message. So that, that event is race now. It's gone. However, let's move over here. We leave the map, right? And now we come back. And let's wait our 10 seconds and see if the message pops up. If the message doesn't pop up, or if it does pop up, that means the event restarted. Ah, look at that. The event restarted. So we don't want that. So that's just a quick example of uh, if you're going to use a race event, uh, you could do it if you're never going back to that map. Right. Or maybe you want something where you want the event to do something and, you know, while you're on the map and, and then you want to erase it for the time being. But every time you come back to the map, you want that event to run again. Uh, you know, you could do monster respawning or something where that where the enemy would reappear because you reentered the map. But just be careful, because if you use a race event incorrectly, um, when you come back to that map, whatever event you thought was gone and not going to repeat, it's going to be there because the map reloaded. So I just wanted to make sure that I highlighted that because, um, like I said, I built it one way, tested things, but never really noticed it because of, of exactly what I was doing. I wasn't really paying attention to the day-night switching, um, and that was going to cause a problem. So instead of doing the erase event, we simply use a control uh, self-switch to move to a page that doesn't do anything. And then, again, make sure it's not running in parallel. Okay? 
So hopefully, I hope that helps. If you're looking for a very, very, very simple day-night system, this will work. You can make it as long as you want. Um, there are other solutions to this, I'm sure, probably plugins. Um, you could also link your day-night system, whatever you want to call it for your time periods. You could link it to things like um, the number of steps the player has taken uh, using a variable. You could do um, the amount of playtime, uh, right, uh, with a variable. Of course, the challenge with that is, is that you've got to track it in a way and, and program it in a way so that, you know, because you're going to keep increasing steps and you're going to cr keep in increasing playtime. And so it's not something that you can just simply write, you know, uh, you know, uh, it's more, you know, it's morning, switch to afternoon after the player takes, you know, 30 steps. Uh, because if you do it the simple way like that, your steps will keep counting. And then um, that might not, that, that wouldn't work once you got through the whole day-night cycle. So anyway, there are other ways to do it. Um, you could, you know, certainly explore that. Maybe I will at some future time. In the meantime, I hope this was helpful. If you're looking for a simple day-night system, uh, if so, please uh, leave a comment. Let me know. It's nice to know if these are helpful for some people, uh, especially new people like me starting out. Uh, you know, like, subscribe, get notifications, and you know, I will keep trying to do some of these simple things to see if they help folks out. The more that's out there in a way that can be searched for, uh, the greater chance it is someone's going to find what they need. So thank you very much, folks. I'm glad you found me. Um, you know, I hope you stick around to see other videos. Go watch my other videos if they're helpful. And uh, happy game making and have a great afternoon.